Hey kids, welcome to lesson 16, functions with return values. Use a function that returns a value in an app. We create functions that contain blocks of code that will be used multiple times within our program. The same is true with functions that return values. Let's see an example of how we might use one of these functions we've written. This exercise comes with starter code that creates a simple turtle driver app. The x and y location of the turtle are stored in the variables xlock and ylock. An event handler is used to update these values when the arrow key is pressed. And then a separate update turtle function is called to draw the turtle on the screen. Currently, the turtle can drive off the screen. If we are clever about how we use our constraint function, however, we can prevent this from happening. We have a do this. Starter code is provided, which allows the turtle to move. Additionally, a working version of constraints is provided. Call the constraints functions twice within the update turtle function to prevent the turtle from going outside the screen. One call to the function for xlock and one time for ylock. Recall the screen is 300 by 450 pixels. Do not worry code.org, I remember that just fine. Run your app and confirm the turtle can no longer leave the screen. Looks like we have a little example here. And my turtle doesn't look like it can go all the way over off the screen. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. Right now we have a pen up feature. We have a variable xlock and ylock that is set to 160 and 240. So the x location of 160 and 240 over here is somewhere in the middle of the screen. On the event screen one, we have a key down event. The x location is going to change. If event key is left, then it is going to move in the x direction, negative 10. If the event key is pressed to the right, it's gonna go positive 10. Up is negative 10, and Y is positive 10. That means 10 pixels up, down, left, or right. Then we update the turtle. We have a function here, update turtle. This is probably where we're gonna put our code here. And they provided us with our constraint right here. In this function, we have an input low and high. We have a variable output. If input is less than low, output equal low. Else, if input is greater than high, output equal high. Else, output equals input. This looks identical to the code we wrote last lesson. Finally, we're going to return the output. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Let's hit run and see what happens. Hello, my little turtle friend. We can move, oh, went off the screen. Whoop, went off the screen, come back there, little person. Let's see if we can go up. Whoop, off the screen again. And off the screen again. Looks like we're losing our little turtle friend a little too much. Well, what do we wanna do here? I know that my code is gonna have to go in between here because code.org told us, hey, you got to update your constraints function here with an update turtle to provide for an X and Y location. Well, how am I going to put this over? Well, I need to know what variable I'm on. So let's do my X lock. What's this X lock going to call to? Well, we want to call to our function down here. So we're going to call to constrain. Within constrain, you can see we have three different parameters. We have an input, we have a low, and we have a high. So that's our constraints right there. What's our input gonna be? What's gonna be our X location? So we're just gonna do X lock again. What's our low number? Low number will be zero, high number. It is 320 pixels wide, so it'll be 320 pixels. That's our X direction. Y location, I think, is going to look very similar. So we're going to call our constraint. We have three parameters. 
This one, instead of x lock, is going to be y lock. We want the smallest to be 0, and we want the largest to be 450. Don't forget your semicolons. Now, when we update turtle, it should never let our turtle go beyond 320 or 450. Roughly, it should take our turtle halfway off screen, much like our example right there. Let's see if that's what happens. Reset run. Turtle, whoop, turtle stops on that way. On the left, let's go up, stops, and down. Let's just test something out here. Let's make our constraint over here 100 and over here 100 as well. So that means it can't go any larger than 100. Let's see what happens. As Soon as I hit the arrow, it jumped over into our little constraint box. It does not look like I can go any further than 100 by 100 pixels. So this is just giving me my upper end of my numbers on my screen. Pretty neat if you ask me, kids. I think that's all we needed to do. Our code is working properly here. Looking back to our do this, we went through our starter code to see what was going on, and we saw the error that the turtle ran off the screen. We call the constraint function twice within our update turtle function. And what we did was we wanted to prevent it by going outside of the screen area. We did that through our function. It had three parameters where it's the input, the low and the high number. We use X and Y location, and we use zero for the low on both and the maximum 320 in the X, 450 in the Y. We ran the app and our turtle no longer left the screen. I think that's all code.org really wanted from us. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you on the last lesson.